by doing this, it keeps the sow cleaner. She she has to lay down more gently. And out in the pen, these big pigs just flop over. They don't take the time to get down slowly, so they just fall over. And, and so if you had piglets around them, they would just flatten them like little pork, pork patties. And so the trait saves babies. And everybody sees that, or at least they show on some of the videos and stuff. And Peter's really good at looking at that stuff and making a, a big emotional deal out of it. But the sows, if you watch a sow in a pen, they lay around. There's no running, romping, having a good time stuff. When they get to be the size of our big white ones, they just lay around. The crate really doesn't limit their activity very much. They get up, they get down, they eat, they drink, they poop, that's it. And so the crate allows them to, to save babies while nursing their, we're nursing their babies and, and keeps them cleaner. And so they're in here for four weeks. They go out, the babies are then weaned, and it's all a good thing. People look at that and go, oh, that's terrible to lock them up like that. But if you put them out here, they'll dig holes. The babies will get in the hole and, and cuddle at night, and then the sow will lay on them. And so, naturally, the, the clearing crates save a lot of babies. Anyway, so that's what we, we put them in, and we can still use them. We're going to still use those here for safety of the students and safety of, the, of course, the sows. But uh, because because it's educational here, uh, we can still use them, and we're going to do that because there's no way we're going to the sows uh, lose their babies. That was a delayed implementation. It is, anyway, yeah. yeah. It's until 2012 or something or maybe even later, 15, but, but still, but still. That will have a huge effect on the huge. animal industry. Yeah. 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 Oh, chickens, that old anything chicken. that can find. Yeah. Chickens was a big thing. Yeah. And uh, it was easy to look at those videos they put in those ads on TV yeah. and go, oh, yeah, that's wrong. But those videos were not taken in California. In fact, in most cases, those, those videos of those birds stacked and racked and manure built up underneath yeah. those cages were taken in Mexico. And not even not even in in California. And so here in California, the, if if they showed the real ones, you know they're almost all individually caged, single story, and they're totally automated. The manure removal is automated. They're clean as a whistle. It's just amazing. Totally inside and, and air conditioned and all that. They take care of them. Obviously, if the animals are well taken care of, they perform better. And so there's no reason to abuse them. So people again got involved in something that they really, you know, we don't decide on how other industries do their business. But in California, we were able to put it on a ballot and say, that's what you're doing. We don't like what you're doing in agriculture, and so we need to change. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, my little soapbox. I love politics. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, and we couldn't, it was a hard one to fight. Yeah. And I'm still a little confused why the, why the ag industry didn't do more yeah. to, to try to make people understand yeah. what's going on. I, I think we really dropped the ball there. But maybe they realized that it was so such an emotional issue, and the the videos they took and the way they presented their side, it was too hard to fight. Right. You know, make us look like we don't care right. you know, right. about animals. So, so maybe they just let this one go. But if you if you're watching the papers at all, there's there's new things coming up now. Yeah. Uh, they're already going. Well, we won that one. Let's go after this one. Right. There's a new one coming. It has to do with bobbing the tails on cows and what was the other one? Something to do with a lot of lots to do with dairy. You know, we're going after the dairy industry for some things, so um, it could be interesting. But it's a sad deal because most dairymen and cattlemen do things to make the animals more comfortable. It's a better way of you know, producing them, and and it may look rough. Whether you agree with castration or dehorning and all those things, there's temporary pain, but in the long run, it it saves animals and 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 say makes them make them produce better. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were supposed to in fact talking about that, we were supposed to have a couple of goats come in. But I think they're coming in at nine fifteen uh, okay. to do some dehorning and stuff. Okay. Okay. What do you feed your pigs? The pigs are on a, a complete diet in a pellet. Uh, we buy it by the ton, it's a commercial pellet. It's mainly based alfalfa uh, alfalfa meal, soybean and corn based with uh, mineral vitamin supplements and all that to it too. Uh, like, no, no, we never have. Um, sometimes, like right, we, this summer, we got a we got a load of uh, uh, grass hay in, and we'll bed the sows down with it, and they'll work through it and eat some of it. But they don't digest fiber very well, and so there are some there are some pig farms that'll try to keep their feed costs down by feeding them hay, and for the big big sows, that's fine because it it helps helps hold their maintenance down. But um, 
because we're school, we try to keep them in the best shape possible. You know, they'd be pretty skinny if, if we tried to cut them. Uh, commercially, yeah, commercially, sows are actually kept a lot trimmer than this. Um, but we try to keep them happy. These are commercial sows for? For breeding pigs, for making babies. You know, you can call it a factory farm if you want to, but... Um, when you're feeding, yeah, if you're feeding sows 10 pounds a day and you've got 300 sows, uh, in fact, the, the beavers branch out in Lucerne, Craig Beavers. I was talking to his uh, his wife the other day, and she was saying they go through three tons a month. Yeah, we go through a ton a month. They go through three tons a month. So it's very, very expensive. So they've got a, a good size. Uh, yeah, I think they have 150 size. Wow. They did. Maybe they're maybe they're somewhere around a hundred. A good place to take a picture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Commercial. Do you know Craig Peters? Remember uh, him? No. Oh, okay. Didn't even know there was a there was a big Oh yeah. Out He's been out there for a long, long time. Some of these fish. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Some um yeah. In fact, people call me here for piglets in the off season, and I always send them out to him because he has them all year round. Okay. Where we we breed specifically for uh, the fall babies in November, and then we'll breed again for spring babies for uh, pears in November. Fresno and Hammett. And yeah. Are so any of these um, sows related? Yes. Yeah. The big, the biggest sow. Her name is Dorothy. She, she had these two babies. These are, these are her, two of her babies, and the white one down there. They're all three her, her babies. Do they still recognize their babies even this far along? No. Although, usually they don't. But what was interesting is we had to, uh, for the fair, we had to combine some pigs together. I had brought some in as we transported them to the fair. And I put her daughter in with her. They hadn't been together for, for months. Put them together, had no problem whatsoever. But if you take if you take these pigs, put, put these pigs together, they would fight like crazy. If you've seen dog fights, pig fights are even more gruesome. They're just all teeth and ripping ears, and they go after each other's heads. And they're so powerful that they latch on and don't let go. So it's the pig fights are really gruesome. So, so, but yeah, and to answer your question, um, they, they reacted very well together. So whether they recognize each other or just they have no problem. Uh, so anyway. what's different about what's different about the digestive tract of a pig and a and a uh, and cattle? You said they don't absorb fiber in the hay. Remember we did we did, we did have we did do a nutrition. Yeah, the carbohydrate. Yeah. So what does that mean in terms of feed? What 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 is how does that change how we feed them? Does that mean that they have um, stronger acid in their stomach because like their they digestive system is yeah. more broad? You don't mind? I'm gonna go yeah. get these guys started doing yeah. some mowing. Okay. And then, and then okay. Do you have cool. any questions? I'll yeah, we'll just walk around. And yeah. <laughs> Should we try to stick around for the for the for the goats? That's up to you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll see what these guys want to do. Okay. Yeah. Um, so a simple stomach. Uh, I don't think the acid in their stomach is any different in terms of concentration. You know, it's like a very strong acid in our, in our stomach or any animal's stomach. pH of about three, so it's a pretty strong thing. And that's why you know when we when we bring acid up into the rest of our upper digestive tract, that's why it, it doesn't feel good and it causes ulcers and all kinds of things. But um, they just don't have a rumen, which so there's really two systems going on with digestion. One is a stomach, and then the rest of the digestive tract, all the intestine, which real simply is just to absorb. Some of the digestion goes on, but it's to absorb things. With a with a ruminant, you have a you have um, a basically a different system. So in a simple stomach, you've got acid and enzymes, proteins, go in and help break up the food, right? whether it's proteins, carbohydrates, or fat. With a ruminant, it goes into the equivalent of a, of a vat, a big barrel with bacteria in it. And the bacteria are actually functioning to break up the food. Okay. So with us and with uh, pigs, we do have bacteria, but they're just in the intestine. They're in, in our large intestine at the back end. So when you hear people say, you know,